you know, in 1885, when Lethbridge came out of the river bottom, this is where it all started. This was Main Street over here, the first street in Lethbridge. On the corner here, where you can see the Chinook Trading Center, that was I.G. Baker. And I.G. Baker was the first department store in southern Alberta. It came from out of Fort Benton, Montana, spread up the Whoop Up Trail, and had stores in such places as Fort McLeod and Calgary. So this was the major department store in 1885 for the next few years. Finally, in, I believe it was in um, 1906, it was bought out by the Hudson's Bay Company, and I'm sure there's still old timers around here that remember uh, when that was the Hudson's Bay Company, still the major store in Lethbridge. Of course, the original store was made out of wood, and in later years, it was pushed back behind in the alley and f a little further on, and then they built this magnificent brick structure, which at one time had flags flying above each, I think there were about eight or 10 flags along the top. Now, some of you uh, old timers may remember in later years, there was a dance hall up at the top, and that was known as the Trianon Ballroom. And many a young lady and man of the district went to a dance on the weekend at the Trianon Ballroom. At the same time, or about the same time, they took out the windows at the front, and there was sort of a, a little entryway, uh, opposite to where the entryway is today, and uh, that was a service station. It took about 30 or 40 years for them to realize that it was against the law to have a dance hall above a service station, and eventually when they figured it out, uh, that was condemned. So that building on the corner has a lot of history to Lethbridge in southern Alberta. Going down the block, all these buildings were the original ones. There was a beautiful bank here about where Progress' sign is. Uh, that bank was torn down, I believe it was in the 50s, uh, just a gorgeous building, uh, but unfortunately at that particular uh, era nobody appreciated some of the rich old buildings that we had. Um, they started out, as I mentioned, I, I believe the bank was the first uh, stone building uh, in the community. Originally these buildings had been wood, and then and over the time they were replaced with, with brick structures. This high building over here is the Bentley building, and again Mr. Bentley I believe was a mayor for a period of time, a uh, very well-known uh, businessman, and I think in his later years he worked for the Customs Department along the border. Uh, down at the far end, and we're going to go there in just a minute to have another peek at that building, I, I like to point this out that this is an area of the city that I expect great changes in the next few years. Uh, so it's a good idea to have a look at it now because it doesn't look to me like they're going to be restoring much of this material, and I imagine in the next few years a lot of this will be gone. But remember it as it is today. It doesn't look very classy, maybe, but this is where Lethbridge got started. This was the first street of our wonderful city. All right, now, we're now on the corner of Round Street and Second Avenue. Fifth Street of today used to be called Round Street. And the building we're looking at is one of the most historic old buildings in Lethbridge, probably. It's the drugstore of J.D. Higginbotham. Higginbotham was a young man the young man came out from Guelph, Ontario, as a young pharmacy graduate, and settled in Fort McLeod. He spent a year or so in Fort McLeod, lived in an old rustic building just outside the, the original fort along the river. And then, in October of 85, I believe it was, he struck out with all his pharmacy equipment and came into Lethbridge. He stayed at the Lethbridge Hotel and for the first while, there was no doctor in Lethbridge, and so what he used to do is sort of uh, do his own um, ideas of what he thought the person had, and then he would contact Dr. Kennedy in Fort McLeod and confirm uh, whether his suspicions were correct or incorrect. So he was really the first doctor, uh, a non-doctor, you could say, in, in Lethbridge. He then set up a drugstore here, which was originally the Apothecary Hall, and it was a wooden structure. Later on, it became stone, and you can see that it's had a, a siding put on it since that time. Not only was the drugstore the center of town, he was the postmaster, and when the streetcars came in, this was probably the hub of, of Lethbridge. So a very historic part of, of the city, uh, Higginbotham's Drugstore. Now, going across the street, we go next to the Lethbridge Hotel. 
Now, you could say this is a trendy look of the Lethbridge Hotel for the 1990s. The Lethbridge Hotel is one of the most interesting hotels in the city because of the fact that it's always been at the same location. And when you study the old photographs, you can see how it's evolved over the years. One time, it was the place in the community to stay. Uh, this is a version that was done a couple of years ago, I would say. Uh, before that, it had an international look, an international style. Uh, before that, it had a balcony down the front, and uh, there was even a French influence in the style for a while. So there's been about five different versions of the Lethbridge Hotel, but it's always been at the same spot in Lethbridge. Going down the street now, we'll have a look at the number one fire hall. Again, one of the landmarks that I'm afraid uh, is not going to be with us very long. Even though it's a designated historic site, there's been some tragic things happen to the number one fire hall in the last few years, and it's uh, crumbling into the ground of the stories that I hear. Again, we're down in the center of town where it all began back in 1885. You know, this building that you're looking at now, number one fire hall, is one of the great tragedies of architecture in, in Lethbridge. This, uh, uh, building was vacated, I would say, in the late 70s for the new fire hall when they built the new fire hall over in the north side. It stood idle for a while, and then a, a businessman wanted to turn it into a first-class restaurant. He did a feasibility study. Uh, it showed well that there was a lot of potential. He went to the city hall, and the politician said, well, maybe if it's that good a deal, maybe we should let other people have some ideas on it and they bounced it around and had uh, more offers come in. The original investor decided to go somewhere else and do other things. Uh, the people that eventually did buy it got caught in the recession. Uh, things were done to the building, but not enough to really keep it going. I've heard that uh, water was uh, kept on over um, the winter, I guess. At one time, the pipes froze, and I believe the inside of it, I'm told, Again, it's hearsay, but I'm told it's a disaster area. It's a designated historic site, which means that it's one of the major buildings that should have been preserved. But from my stories that I get, is it's turned into such a disaster area now that it may not ever be able to be uh, resurrected. Again, a very tragic story, because this number one fire hall, as you can see, very majestic, is one of the buildings uh, that is really adds character to the history of Lethbridge. We're looking now at uh, remains of Lethbridge's Chinatown. Maybe a little bit of background would be in keeping. The Chinese basically came into this area. Uh, well, some of them came up from the gold rush of California in 1849. But then the major numbers came when the CPR was building the railway back in 1885. When they got to the mountains, there was some pretty rough stuff going on. And the whites, I guess you could say, didn't want to do it. So they brought in Orientals who would work for a very small amount, maybe a dollar a day, and would do stuff that the whites just wouldn't do. And so there was a flood of Orientals came into this area, uh, or into Western Canada at the turn of the century, and there was tremendous discrimination against them. And so when the railway was finished, they moved into communities and they stuck to themselves. And so most of the cities in Western Canada would have an area called Chinatown, where the Orientals lived. And this was Lethbridge's Chinatown. It's got smaller over the years, but it's one of the areas that I think there should be every effort possible to preserve. You'll notice the first building, Nakagama, and I know you're going to say it doesn't sound Chinese to me. Well, it isn't, of course, it's uh, Japanese, and it uh, caters, I believe, to people that uh, are interested in the Japanese uh, culture. The Boan Tong is a very long-standing building, and I believe the building at the very end, the Masonic Hall, is uh, now a designated historic site in the province of Alberta. Again, it's an area that I think in the next few years, as we start to realize the potential of tourism in this area, uh, a great effort will be made to preserve this area, and it'll become one of the major attractions in the city. Now we're looking at what's called the Bridge Inn. I remember this hotel as the Arlington. And one of the things, the highlights of years that have gone by is there was a beautiful oil painting 
of Lethbridge as it would have looked like if you had taken a picture from the air back in 1912. And it hung over the bar, not that I ever saw it, of course, but it hung over the bar at the Arlington Hotel, and I believe it's now in the library of the University of Lethbridge. You've got to remember that just on the other side of the Arlington was the roundhouse and the main division point of the, of the railway. The railway station is just over a block, and of course, in those days, up until a few years ago, it was the railroad, the way people came into this area. And so you had some of these hotels very close to the railway tracks. Now, of course, you have Sears and the new uh, Park Place Mall has replaced all of that, and in a little while, there won't be very much to see at all from the original uh, days before the tracks were moved to Kip. We're standing now in the front, direct front of Higginbotham's Drugstore. As I've mentioned earlier, this was the center of town. This is where everybody came. The streetcar would come right in front, lined up, pick up people and take them across town. Now, across from Higginbotham's Drugstore was the beautiful Galt Gardens. Now, there's a tremendous number of pictures of Galt Gardens in the early years of Lethbridge. It was the focal point of the city, and everybody loved to photograph the gardens. There's many pictures, for example, taken from the balcony of the Lethbridge Hotel, just over across the street from us. Originally, the park was used for sports events. They had baseball games. They would bring Medicine Hat down on the turkey track, and uh, they'd have their baseball games. There was lacrosse. Then, when the boom came and the boom hit southern Alberta about 1906, where thousands upon thousands of immigrants from Europe came and from the northern United States came into this area to get farmland. They were lined up just across the way there uh, near where the 9th Street Bridge used to be at the old land office. They were lined up for days waiting to get land. Anyway, at that particular time, they decided to make the park into a show place, and so they dug up all the dirt and they simply put a gorgeous number of sidewalks coming from all directions into the center of the park. Then they created in the next few years flower beds and by the 1930s it was a show place. Every summer it was just full of flowers. Of course, after the malls came in the 60s and people started leaving the center of town, then uh, this part of town started to deteriorate, and so did Galt Gardens. Now in the center of Galt Gardens, now a lot of the sidewalks that I mentioned, and of course, are gone, the flowers are gone. Let's look at some of the landmarks that were on the outside of the park. Over here, you can see the IG, IGA store. At one time, you would have seen a humongous, well, that's about it, a large building with a steeple, that was the first opera house. And Elliot Galt, who was the son of Sir Alexander Galt that helped get Lethbridge started, he lived up in, uh, up in that building. Later years, it was used as the irrigation building, and it was torn down around 1960. Then as we swing around here clockwise, you'll see the Canada Trust building. I'm sure many of you remember at one time there was, a, well, Lethbridge's first skyscraper was there. It was the Sherlock block. And uh, it was, uh, I believe it was the tongue and steel or um, it was a very well made building. When they tore it down a few years ago, they thought it would take a matter of weeks. It took a matter of months to tear it down. Very well constructed building. Lethbridge's first skyscraper. Now as we continue on, Clockwise again, you see the back of the Lethbridge Public Library. Like with most uh, public buildings that they build in this area, it didn't happen overnight. This was the Carnegie Library, which meant that they got money from the Carnegie Foundation out of the eastern states. And uh, it took a long time to get the whole story together. But finally, Lethbridge got its first big library. And how they got it into Galt Gardens must be a mystery to many people because originally uh, Lethbridge got this land on the condition that it wouldn't be a place where they put a bunch of buildings. But somewhere or other they stuck the library on and I think we've been the better for it ever since. Then as you continue around you'll see the remains of the Coaldale Hotel as it was called. 
on the corner of 5th Street and 3rd Avenue. And then continuing on again, there's an empty lot just near the corner. And at one time, there was a very beautiful bank that stood in that empty lot. It was uh, huge pillars in front of it. And it's one of those buildings that I'm sure now would never be allowed to be taken down. It was taken down in, in either the late 50s or the early 60s and again re replaced by a beautiful car lot. And then of course, uh, the Lethbridge Hotel, which we've talked about before. And at one time, there was this balcony in the front of the Lethbridge Hotel, and uh, many a picture of Galt Gardens uh, came from that particular balcony. This is one of the monuments that's located in Galt Gardens. It's a rather an interesting one. It relates to Captain E.C. Hoy, who was the first person to fly over the Canadian Rockies. He did it back in 1919. Started from Vancouver and stopped at various communities along the way, um, including, uh, well, okay, Cranbrook. Finally came to Lethbridge, then went on to Calgary. The first flight over the Canadian Rockies. Now, the interesting thing about this is that he came back in 1964, I believe it was, and at that time, they put up this monument. They had a big celebration. They had all the major politicians from Ottawa, a large crowd. Two, uh, ten years later, they took the same monument, or the same plaque, put out by the Historic Sites and Monuments of Canada, and they put it up just outside or at the airport, International Airport, in Vancouver. Now, nobody took the time to read the monument, because when, when you read it, it mentions that he followed the route over Vernon, Grand Forks, Cranbrook, and then through Crawford Pass before coming to Lethbridge. The interesting thing is nobody questioned the fact, where is Crawford Pass? Two plaques, one in Lethbridge, one in Vancouver, nobody reads it. About uh, another seven or eight years passed, and somebody took the time, read it, questioned it, contacted the archives in Ottawa and said, where is the Crawford Pass? Well, the fact is, it doesn't exist. It was supposed to be Cranbrook, or it was supposed to be the Crow's Nest Pass, so don't believe every plaque you read. They can be wrong as well. All right, let's just swing around now and have a look at the major monument in Galt Gardens, which happens to be, of course, the one that relates to those people that died in the First and Second War. This is one of the major areas of the park. And of course, every November 11th, there's special ceremonies at this site. One of the interesting stories that I've heard about the names that are on the monument is that there's one man whose name appeared there but it found that they found out about five or six years later that he was still alive. Um, how, this, how it happened, I'm not quite sure, but I believe it was a matter of the fact that he was reported missing uh, the last day of the fighting, and his name somewhere got into Ottawa, and, his, and it ended up being on the uh, monument. He ended up uh, living later years in Calgary, happened to come down here one day, was reading the monument, and found his own name. Now that can be a bit terrifying, can't it? You know, the times are changing, of course. And in the background right now, some of you may remember it as a service station or a garage. It's part of the era following the Second World War when everybody had a lot of money to spend and they were buying automobiles that hadn't been produced for a few years. There was a dealership started here called Marquis Motors. Then I believe it became known as Fleming Motors. Now it's turned into a restaurant. As times change, it's adapting new uses for, for old buildings. And of course, with the Park Place getting started in this area, we've already talked about how there's going to be tremendous changes in all the buildings uh, that are around this area. Now just crossing the street, which is now turning into be, of course, a main drag, and it's no longer Baroness Road, it's First Avenue. But across from it is the old railway station, which managed to be preserved, now the Lethbridge Health Unit. And of course, if you take and think back in time for years and years and years as the trains came in each night, 
people would gather at the train station to meet their friends coming in. And it was always nice to be on a cold winter's night to wake up and listening to the clang of the cars or the, the whistles of the engines, something that you don't hear anymore as steam power has disappeared. It's good to see they're preserving some of these buildings and also some of the cars that made the buildings a success. In the background, you see the uh, old steam locomotive that Andy Stasco, an old timer of Lethbridge, managed to get into this area for many years. It was in Galt Park. Now it's preserved as part of the complex of the old CPR station. It's nice to have these roots, something to remember what Lethbridge used to be about. You know, one of the things that we should remember when we live in Lethbridge is how lucky we are having this open space right in the center of town. Think of yourself in Calgary, Edmonton, or almost any other city in North America, and you have that enclosed feeling. We have this gorgeous park that was deeded to us by Sir Alexander Galt in the very, very early years of our city. We want to preserve it. We've had a struggle at times doing that over the last hundred years, but I think we're all beginning to appreciate just what a wonderful spot it is to have right here in the center of town. So we've looked today at, at the first part of Lethbridge. When Lethbridge came out of the river bottom, this is where it all happened. Again, it was on Round Street and Baroness Road, First Street and Fifth Street, uh, First Avenue and Fifth Street. And it was between Second Avenue and First uh, Avenue that really the first buildings were when they came out of the River Valley. Chinook Trading Center was, of course, the IG Baker store, the first department store in this area. And as you look down the road here towards the river bottom, in the distance, you can see the Sixth Brewery, now a part of history, and who knows what's going to, what's going to be there in a few years' time. There was the Cecil Hotel, there was the Arlington, there were some pretty run-down areas right down this street. But it's interesting to note in the last few years how the quality is starting to pick up and you can look for big changes in the next few years. Ever since I was a kid, I remember them talking about let's clean up First Avenue. What an entrance to the city. Well, you know, things are starting to happen. And I think in the next few years,